Hi, my name is Simon Hurley and I'm a 15 year old card maker here at scrapbook.com and I'm super excited to be sharing how to use a stamp positioning tool with your crafting and stamping to make it a lot easier and get some great results. So here is the Tonic Tim Holtz stamping platform. This will help you get your stamps positioned in place and you can stamp over top of them multiple times to get some awesome results in the end. So I'm going to start off by sharing how to kind of really align your stamps in this tool and make it easier to kind of stamp together and create a little scene on your card. So I'm using one of these little stitched panels that you can die cut and I'm going to line it up in the corner of my stamp positioning tool. So right here and then you can magnetize it down onto the platform and that'll help it stay in place as you're stamping and then you can move on to start working. I'm going to use this stitched cacti stamp set from Waffle Flower, but you can use any set. I just like to use this one because it has all this stitching that you have to line up together on the card. So I'm going to peel out my stamps that I want to use. And I'm going to start off with the little pot first. So I'm going to line it up kind of in the center, leaving room for a sentiment at the bottom. And once that's lined up, you can take the stamping top of the tool, the acrylic piece, and pick up that little stamp there, kind of like an acrylic block. And then your stamp is right here and it's positioned on there. So then I'm gonna take my color. I'm using a tanned leather here. I'm gonna ink that up and then you can stamp it down. And there you have your stamped image. Now if that didn't turn out perfectly, you can always ink it back up up here and restamp it. And you can give it some more pressure in the places where you want more ink. So then I'm going to peel that little stamp off there and I'm going to move on to one of my layers. So this is the layer with the more stitching here and this will be my lightest color. So I'm lining that up right with the pot at the bottom there and you kind of want to align the stitches and then I'm going to pick it up with the top of my stamping tool. Then I'm taking my lightest color that I'm going to go in with here and I'm going to ink that up and then you can stamp it down onto the surface of your card. And I didn't get great results there and I want more ink. So I'm going to re-ink that up. And then you can stamp it down once more over top, making sure to give it lots of pressure where you want more ink to show up. And then you can get a better stamped result. So then I'm going to peel that little image off and I'm going to move on to the one with less stitches. So this will kind of fill in those little areas with a darker color. And I love these step stamping. Um, it just gives some really awesome results in the end and everybody wonders how you do it. So it's pretty awesome and you get some great results from these. So I'm going to use a darker color of green here to make it really pop. I'm inking that up and I'm going to pick it up and go right onto the surface of my card. So then you have that darker area filled in there and you have all the stitching done. Then I can move on to add some little details here. So you can add a little bird sitting on top of your cactus. And you can also add a little flower at the top. And there's also a whole other cactus you can use in this set. And I'm going to just line up the stamp that I want to use. And you can even do several stamps at one time. So I'm going to add that bird stamp in there. And I can also do this flower. And I'm just going to align that right at the top and pick up those stamps. And then I can go in with the two different ink colors that I want to use. So I'm using an orange. And then I'm going to ink up the second image with a pink ink pad here for that flower. And I'm gonna stamp it right down. And if you didn't get good results, you can go back again with that same ink pad. Ink up that stamp. And stamp it down again. Then I'm going to peel those off and finish off my little bird here with its little body. So I'm adding that onto there. Making sure it's nice and lined up with those stitch. And then I can stamp it down again. To make a little blue bird. So then once this is stamped down, then I can add my little eyeball right inside that bird. And instead of lining this up in the tool, I'm just going to do it onto an acrylic block. 
This one's just easier because it's a tiny little stamp. You could still line it up, but it's a little bit easier just using an acrylic black to line it up. And there's the little eyeball. So I find that this tool goes really well with sentiments. I can never line my sentiments up perfectly and I love using stamp positioning tools to help line it up. So I'm using this Howdy sentiment here today. And the nice part about this is you can line it up down here and make sure it's nice and straight. And then you can make sure that it's aligned using this grid on the top portion there. So it should be nice and lined up with that grid and that's how you know your sentiment's gonna be nice and straight on your card. So I'm just gonna ink up this stamp using the black archival ink and then you can stamp that down. The nice part about this is you can assure that it's gonna be straight on your card and if it doesn't stamp perfectly, you can always redo it. This is nice because you'd hate to ruin a card when it's this far into it. So there you go, that's how you stamp this fun cactus card. Now to adhere this to a card base, I'm just gonna take this, add a little bit of tape runner on the back and I can add it to a top folding card base here. And there's the finished card, and now we're gonna move on to the next few techniques. Moving on to the next card, I'm gonna share how to stamp an image off the edge using this fun tool in the Misty Creative Corners. So I'm just gonna take my piece of cardstock and one of the corners with the magnets on them. I'm gonna stick this right in the corner of the stamping tool, and then I'm gonna put my cardstock there as well, and I can add magnets to hold it down. This way this is off the edge here so you can stamp images going off of this edge and you can even use two of the corners if you want to use a bigger image and line it up that way. So I'm using this Concord and Ninth Flower stamp set and I'm gonna use this big flower image and I love how it's all together for you so it already has that nice scene built. And I'm just gonna stamp this kind of coming in onto the card and then I can pick it up with that acrylic piece. And if this comes out, that's totally okay. It just sticks right back into those pieces. And then you can pick it up like an acrylic block. And then I can stamp it right down onto the card. So I'm gonna ink it up first using archival ink. And then I'm gonna stamp this right down onto the card and give it some nice pressure and if it doesn't stamp perfectly the first time and you want more of a solid image, like I said, you can go right back into it and keep adding ink to get a nice dark crisp image. So once this is all stamped down, I can start stamping my images inside to color this in. And the cool part about this set is they're kind of layered, so they kind of look like watercolors once you're done stamping. So then I'm gonna peel this stamp right off of here, and I'm gonna add this watercolor flower on top of it. So you can kind of line it up, it goes over the edge. I'm gonna pick that up. And then you can stamp it down. And the fun part about these stamp positioning tools is that you can do more than one color with it. So I've inked it up a little bit here and I'm just gonna pull off a little bit of that ink kind of around the edge and stamp it down there. And this might look a little bit weird at first, but then I can go in with a second color here and I can go around those edges where I missed with the purple and stamp it down again. And this way you can kind of get a fun blend of both those colors together. So you can kind of see some of that purple inside there as well as some of that blue around the outside. So that gives a pretty cool and fun blended effect. And if you get any ink on here, you could just wipe it off. So now I'm gonna pull this off quickly. I find that to just do all these individual leaves, it's just a little bit easier to use the acrylic blocks. So I'm going to apply my image onto the acrylic block and I can do my stamping here. So I'm gonna use these Distress Oxides to stamp down all the images. And I can wipe off certain portions of the image that I don't need because they kind of overlap each other. And you can get some really fun, colorful images when you do this. And you can kind of build up your whole background. So I'm gonna continue stamping in all these different colors and it takes a little while, but it definitely pays off in the end. You get a really cool and fun watercolor looking background, even though you just stamped it, because these images have that fun texture in it. 
So I'm going to pull off my next stamp that I want to use. And I'm going to continue using these distressed oxides and keep stamping in this background. So now that this is all done being stamped, I'm going to finish it off by cutting it out because I made a little bit of a mess with my stamps around the edges, but that's okay. I'm just going to cut pretty close around the edge, just kind of following the image here. And you don't need to be too precise. I like doing this so I can just pop it up on my card and it gives a really clean and simple but cool portion to the card. And it's a fun way to pop it up. So after that's all cut out, I'm going to grab some foam tape and then I can use this on the back of that card so I can pop each piece up. And this will make it stick off nicely off the card and give some nice texture and dimension. Now I'm going to finish this card off with a sentiment. So in this stamp set, you can take a couple of the different sentiments and add them together like I've done in the past. So I'm going to use this hello and lovely to make an awesome sentiment. So I'm going to add these onto my acrylic blocks. And then I'm just going to take a piece of cardstock here and stamp them down using some black inks to make them pop and stand out from all that colored stamping we just did. So I'm inking that up. And I can stamp it down onto my cardstock. After that's complete, I can come in with my scissors again and cut out these different sentiments. So I'm just going to do a box around that hello. And there we have that sentiment. And then around this lovely sentiment, I'm just going to kind of do what we did for that background and just cut a nice border right around it. This is similar to die cutting. However, if there's not a die cut for a stamp like this, it's really easy just to cut it out and then you'll be able to add it onto your card but you won't have a whole rectangle of white cardstock in there. You just have that little border of white to make it pop and stand out. And then I'm going to take some more foam tape and add it right to the back of this sentiment to make it kind of pop off that card. And this doesn't make it stand up too much, it just gives it a little tiny bit of dimension that it pops out a little bit. And then I'm just going to adhere this kind of at a little angle on top of some of those flowers. And that's finished for this card with the stamping over top of the corner and then you can do some of those fun colorful flowers on the inside. So it's nice about some of these stamping tools is you can also use rubber cling mounted stamps in them. And for this one in particular, all you need to do is pull this acrylic piece up and then once it's in that position, you can pull it out and you want it so you can read the rubber word. So I'm gonna put it back in like that and I flipped it over so now I can read the rubber there and now I can add rubber stamps inside of here. So I'm gonna take my watercolor card base. I did this using watercolor cardstock and I cut it into a top folding side card. So I'm going to use my magnets on that and I can start adding my images in. I'm gonna use these fun hipster stamps from Tim Holtz. I just love how these look and they give some really fun images. And I'm just going to kind of center it a little bit more in here. And you can center it up with the ruler and make sure that it doesn't move. And then I'm gonna add my magnets down and I can pick those stamps up. Once those are picked up, I'm going to use a waterproof ink. So I'm using this Umbrella Crafts black ink. And I'm going to ink up my images. Make sure they're all nice and inked. And then I can stamp these down onto my card. And I'm going to give it lots of good pressure because this watercolor paper is textured. So you really want to make sure all that ink goes into the different grooves of this cardstock. And if you still get some little gaps like that because of this paper, it's going to happen, but you can go back with more ink to re-stamp on top of it 
and get a little bit of a better impression. Now there's still a couple little grooves in there and you can keep going back if you want to, but I'm just gonna leave it like this because I think that looks pretty good and we got some nice solid impressions. And then I can start my watercolor background. So I'm gonna close this and move that off to the side. And I'm gonna bring this piece back in and we can watercolor with distress oxides onto here. And these are really nice because you can take the distress oxides and put them onto the Ken Oliver craft mat and they'll sit on top of it so you can use them as kind of a watercolor palette to go into. So I'm gonna put down a bunch of the different fun colors that I want to use. So once I have all the different colors that I want to use, I'm gonna come in with a water brush and this just dispenses water as you use it. So this is super nice to kind of use as a watercolor palette and you can just dip your brush in and start watercoloring with these colors. This is a ton of fun and they give some really vibrant effects when you're using them onto your card. And have fun and be creative with this. You can go outside of the lines with these little hipsters. They're kind of crazy, so you can have fun watercoloring them. And I'm just gonna go in with like an orange or a darker color than this yellow and kind of go on top of some of those lines that are already drawn in for you to make it a little bit darker. I'm gonna color in that beak as well. And to clean out your water brush, I'm just gonna use a paper towel and kind of run the brush off to the side and that'll get rid of any of the color inside of there so you can move on to some more colors. Now that this is finished, if you're impatient like me, I'm gonna come in with a heat tool just to heat set this and make sure it's all nice and dry, but you could just let it air dry as well. So to clean up your craft mat, all you need to do is just kinda of spray this, and you could use all this ink to create another colorful background, but I'm just gonna wipe it up here quickly with a paper towel. And it comes really clean and easy off this craft mat, cause the ink kinda of just sits on top. So now I'm gonna add a sentiment onto this card and I'm just gonna use one of these fun little sentiments here that says sup from the stamp set. And I'm going to add this onto an acrylic block. And then I can stamp it down onto a piece of cardstock. Just with some black ink and that'll stand out nicely from the background and especially since it's on that white piece of cardstock. So then to quickly cut it out, I'm just going to kind of go around it with a little white border and I'm gonna follow the path of the letters right around it as I'm cutting. And this just makes it so I can fit this tiny sentiment onto my card. And then I can add a little piece of foam tape as well, and that'll make it pop off the card. So once that's added, if you wanna take it even one step further, I'm gonna bring in this Nouveau Crystal Glaze, and this is just kind of that shine you can add to your cards. It's an extra embellishment, and that will give this fun final effect where when you tilt it, the glasses have that kind of glossy look to it. So I'm just gonna add a thin coat of this on here. Don't add the coat too thick, otherwise you will have just a big puddle on the inside and it will really never dry, so. Add it in a nice thin coat and then you can set it kind of overnight to dry and then it'll dry and be nice and glossy after you're done because it's a little bit cloudy right now but once it's completely dry it turns into this fun clear glaze. Thanks so much for stopping by this lesson. I hope you guys really learned a lot with the stamp positioner and how to use it on your cards to make your life just a little bit easier. I would love to see all of your project photos in the gallery, so keep posting them over there, and I'll see you soon for the next lesson.